Well, if things are seen to be believed, it is indeed a beautiful Wednesday night here. <laughs> and I got to tell you, we had a lot of college football last week that you know shaped up the landscape. I know there's some things that have happened over the past couple days, you know, Tuesday night football, Wednesday night football happening now. That conference USA nonsense is going to be over. This week will be the last week the AP poll even matters. That's the main poll that we use, you know, anyway, until the College Football Playoff Committee sets up their meetings. And so on a crisp Halloween night, they will get together, say what they need to say, and put those first rankings together. Well, well, USC, you know, Lincoln Riley, Caleb Williams, and the entire Trojan crew lost their second straight game to Utah. Not only put that put a damper in their Pac-12 hopes, that put a damper, and that pretty much killed their college football playoff hopes. I know there's some people saying, oh, well, they still have a chance. No. Unless your name is Auburn in, what, 2019, 2018? You're not, you're not, you're not getting that opportunity. You have to beat the best of the best to be even considered, and that's and that was the only time really that a two-loss team really had the chance. Oklahoma, Texas, other blue bloods, you know, they barely escaped their Big Twelve foes. Yeah, there was you know, penalty controversy in that Texas game. Yes, I know it was absolutely atrocious. An atrocious spot given to Houston, but then Houston decided to mess it up anyways by just calling the dumbest play on fourth down manageable. You know, it is what it is. Texas escapes. Quinn Ewers is hurt. So, yeah. Oklahoma still doesn't look like world beaters. I'm sorry. They just don't. Um, you know. Again, this is the same kind of wishy-washy nonsense that we saw in the Texas game. This is this is not a team, you know, that's like this excellent team that Benables has built. It's still a learning curve, and I don't. And I, I some people are saying, "Oh well, yeah, well, they're better. They're they're elite and stuff like that." No, 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 no. We need to backtrack again. This was a six and seven team last year. There's still improvements needed to be made to Oklahoma before they could be, you know, this team that's legit. And that's. I don't know the crazy thing, and I know people are, who are chomping at the bit for the 12 team playoff to happen this year. No, it's not going to happen this year. Unfortunately, that nonsense will take place next year. So you you will get your cake, and you will be able to eat that cake. So next year, that's all that 12 team playoff hypothetical scenarios. This all plays out during the season. So again, my thoughts on the 12 team playoff are not withstanding at this point. Um, so, yeah, how about the Tennessee Volunteers, right? They looked good for one half against the Alabama Crimson Tide, and then nothing in the second half. Nick Saban yet again adjusted, and Tennessee just fell flat on their faces. And, I mean, that also pretty much gets rid of Tennessee from the conversation, not like they had much to begin with, but that loss to Florida earlier in the season. But they didn't need to lose this game against the Tide. And now they're in a bind in the SEC East. Penn State, same thing. Sputtering. Just this entire game, basically. Drew Aller looked like a lost child trying to find his mother. Because, I mean, this Buckeyes defense is just different. Marvin Harrison Jr., different breed of person. We're talking. Cutting them up all the field, that Penn State defense. And that was the only guy that that really did anything. Don't don't get it twisted. Marvin Harrison Jr. was the only person on that field doing anything out of the 44 guys, you know, out of the 44 starters on both offenses and defenses that were doing anything. And James Franklin, pack it up, man. This is a joke, man. This is a joke. Another loss against Ohio State. That's seven straight. What, nine of your last ten, you know, games against Ohio State? You know, you've been coaching Penn State for 10 years, 9 out of 10 years, you know, you haven't you haven't done anything. And it's the same thing against Michigan, you haven't done anything. What is it going to take for Penn State to get over the hump? 
because it's clearly not that. That def that defense of Ohio State did no wrong. And yeah, they gave up a late touchdown, but it felt, you know, 20 to 12, it felt like 40 to 12. That was the way Ohio State's defense is playing. And I mean, the offense of Ohio State is still kind of bad. They have no running game. There's injuries abound. You know, McCord's still kind of iffy. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know about Ohio State right now. Still not enough for me. Um, Oregon, Missouri, Florida State, they all took care of their foes pretty easily. Again, Oregon had a tough test against Washington State. Took care of that. Florida State knocked out Riley Leonard yet again. Hurt his, hurt his leg again. And that was all she wrote after that. Once Leonard got hurt, Florida State took care of business. Missouri took care of business against South Carolina. You know, the run game, excellent. Passing game was kind of, you know, a little off for Brady Cook and company. But, you know, it is what it is. So Missouri in a very good position. Same thing with Oregon. Florida State also in a very good position. North Carolina, on the other hand, also another team that hilariously lost, you know, it wasn't even it wasn't even like USC or Tennessee or Penn State. It was just hilarious because it was on the CW and it was to a Virginia team that just won their first game last week against William and Mary of all teams. You know. <laughs> like like North Carolina, their defense regressed back to last year all over again. I don't know what in the world happened in this game to where things I couldn't even watch this game, you know. But North Carolina just, I don't know. I don't know, man. Not 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 the way you want things to end for your undefeated season. You know, Drake May still has a chance, you know, maybe to get North Carolina to some big things in the future, but we'll see. Uh, Michigan. What can I say about Michigan that hasn't been said already? What can I say? What can I say about Michigan that hasn't been said already? Flexing their muscles against the Spartans. Shut them out, too. You know. It, it, that's better than Iowa. I mean, you know, Michigan State, you know, maybe they're feeling a little bit better than Iowa did, I guess. Maybe. I don't know. When, when your punt return, that should have counted because you gave, you know, a weird signal. You know, that's technically, it's part of the rule. It's a technical rule. But, you know, it's one of those weird things in college football, kind of like the one-point safety. You know, it's just like, wow. That's a thing, you know, with the disconcerting hand signals. That's a thing. I know. Crazy, right? Iowa falls up to top 25 anyway, so that's kind of a win-win. The offense still is putrid, man. Still a putrid offense from the Hawkeyes. And, of course, you know, you know, Washington Huskies, ooh, Washington Huskies, they've been struggling against the Arizona State Sun Devils, but they got the win. You know, they've struggled for like 15 straight years against Arizona State, but they got the win when it mattered. You know, Michael Penix and company just didn't have the offensive firepower. There was, there was a lot of turnovers in this game, a lot of turnovers, a lot of bad plays being called. It was a rough game, rough Pac-12 after dark. That's how it is. It's always, it's always going on a drunk bender at 2 a.m. With, with the Pac-12 after dark. So... This week's slate, you see, it, it's kind of eh, on, on, on a little bit of an ass side, but you have that one big matchup in there, Oregon, Utah, the two teams that have one loss. And really, you know, you, you look at the rest of the slate, you have James Madison has made it into the rankings. You know, Oregon State is going to be playing Arizona late, and Arizona's no slouch. Um you have a couple games in the early window that are going to be intriguing. Again, games in the midday window are going to be pretty intriguing. Um, there's, some, there's some intrigue in the late window. You know, maybe like an Air Force, a James Madison, see if they can stay unbeaten. Um, you have Washington, Stanford. Stanford just got blown out by UCLA, who's playing Colorado on ABC for some reason. You know, so it, it's, it's an interesting... Week nine, as we're going into the month of November, this will be the last week of October. And now, you know, Cam Rising's, you know, he's done. He's been, he's been downgraded to finished for the year. So he's, he is, is there still a problem 
you know, the Utes, they don't have the offensive prowess, but when they can get some guys going, like Quinton Jackson, you know, they can get some guys going. You know, like, uh, what's his name? Sion, Sion Baki, I think. I know, I know, the, I know the dude's name, but he, but basically the again, you know, the Utes just didn't don't have the depth. So they had a cornerback play wide receiver and running back a little bit last week, and he just tore up US, USC like it was nothing. Ducks defense, really good defense. Utah's defense, really good defense. I'm expecting something, you know, pretty, pretty low scoring. Maybe we'll see. It may be like the Utah UC, USC game where it's actually a little bit more of a high scoring affair. And I'm still expecting some defense to be played. Um, Drew Aller, James Franklin, the whole Nittany Lion crew got to show up against the Deanna. You know, you got to recover from last week's debacle. And again, Malik Murphy will be leading the Texas Longhorns. It's Keaton Slovis. Yes, Keaton Slovis. And the BYU Cougs. Yes, the Cougs. And, you know, it's been quite some time since BYU and Texas hooked up in a game. And I remember those Taysom Hill years from 10 years ago. Yeah, the two years that BYU played Texas, 2013 to 14, the Taysom Hill games. I, I remember those very well. And those were not fun. Keaton Slovis. He's a kind of a college journeyman at this point, and BYU, you know, hasn't really proved too much in the Big 12 so far. So, you know, Murphy has the confidence. It's just can can it all come together? That's really what what's kind of happening here. Same thing with Lance Leopold's upset-minded Kansas Jayhawks will be hosted the Big Noon game against Oklahoma again. Oklahoma is a vulnerable. That offense sputters. A lot. When it gets clicking, it clicks. When it doesn't click, it does not click. Many times it gets UCF. Many times it gets Texas. Many times it gets teams like SMU. That Oklahoma offense just sputters. Doesn't know what to do. Same thing with the defense. It sputters. It doesn't know what to do. It's like a sputtering car that doesn't know how to work properly. <laughs> it's it's not perfect. Oklahoma is not perfect. And this is a recipe for Lance Leopold, who, who could start anybody. It, it, it could be Jalen Daniels. It could be Jason Bean. Who knows, honestly, what Leopold's going to do. Um, you have Washington, Ole Miss. Washington, again, trying to stay unbeaten. They cannot have a letdown against Stanford of all teams. Ole Miss, same thing. They have some key games coming up. Georgia. George is the big game coming up for the Ole Miss Rebels, and they do not want to have a slowdown against a Vanderbilt team that played Georgia pretty tough for about two and a half quarters, really. Um, Ohio State, same thing. This cannot be a trap game for Ohio State. This cannot be a Purdue and Iowa type game, you know, for Ohio State. The Buckeyes offense has not convinced me at all, but again, Wisconsin isn't very good, so, you know, the Buckeyes should be able to take care of business easily. But if they don't somehow, just, just blame it on their offense. At least anybody that's not named Marvin Harris Jr. Blame it on everybody else. And then the dogs, again, no Brock Bowers for a little bit. They're trying to get that repeat. Keeping that going against Graham Mertz and the Florida Gators. In Jacksonville, so the world's largest outdoor cocktail party continues so you know it's it's that one's going to be fun so we got plenty of games going on right now we got we have the, the wednesday and tuesday night conference usa action ending so those that conference will be back on where it belongs on espn plus so you don't have to bet on those games anymore um and then maction takes over so Halloween's going to be fun. Halloween's going to be fun. We're going to talk about the college football playoff rankings, you know, and everything like that. And hopefully I'll stick, stick landing to keep things on time because this is tonight's going to be a little double header type thing. So with that being said, y'all take care. Enjoy week nine of the college football season. And I will see you all 
next Tuesday once those college football playoff rankings are out. And, of course, later tonight. I'll see you later tonight, actually. You know, for the NFL, anyway. 